circumstance. The one who gives to the poor will not lack, but those who shut their eyes, it's problematic, it's deleterious, it's harmful for them to be stingy. He says in verse 22 here as well, uh, someone with a bad eye is a stingy person. The stingy man chases after riches. He does not know that poverty will overtake him. If you look in chapter 29, verse 7, a righteous person considers justice for the poor. It's, it's this kindness. It's the disposition to care about others. I'd like to go to uh, Romans chapter 12 real quick and just walk through a, a, a passage there where we're hearing from uh, Rabbi Paul, the Apostle Paul. If you look at chapter 12, verse 9, I just want to walk through some texts here. Because it, in a way, he's, he's saying much the same. He says, let love, in verse 9, be without hypocrisy. Now remember, love isn't just this mushy feeling. You know, you have these sweet 16 magazines, love is this, and love is that, and someone fell in love, and then they fall out of love. And, you know, I mean, it's just kind of all over the place emotionally. Now, to be sure, there are emotions associated with love, but it's not a, a pit that you just fall into. Uh, let love, love is an action verb in Hebrew. Aha, it means to do good on behalf of. It's an executive decision. Let love be without hypocrisy. Detest what is evil. Hold fast to the good. Be tenderly devoted to one another in brotherly love. Outdo one another in giving honor. It's interesting to be a believer. People talk about what does it mean to be an authentic Christian? Well, if you really want to do the Jesus story right, you got to put on the yarmulke, say Yeshua instead of Jesus, meet on Friday or Saturday instead of Sunday. You know, and uh, granted, I'm all for kind of recovering the Jewish essence of the Christian faith, but what it means to be authentically Christian has a lot more to do with following what Paul's talking about here than what you do put on your head, Amen. what you put on your shoulders, Amen. and what day someone sits in a pew. Amen. I mean, authenticity is more determined by the way that we live and the way that we act, more so than, than the way we go to church, the way we quote, do church, whatever that is. He says, let love be without hypocrisy, detesting what is evil, holding fast to the good. Be tenderly devoted to one another in brotherly love. Outdo one another in giving honor. It, it, it's, it's interesting. It, it's competitive. See who can care about other people the best. Do not be lagging in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Keep serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope. Enduring in distress, persisting in prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, extending hospitality. Now, by the way, hospitality is an interesting word. Uh, the word hospital comes from it. So does the word hospice, interestingly. Extending hospitality is a kind of grace that's extended to another person. You know, now you can go into certain cities, and if you look at hospitals, there's Baylor Baptist Hospital, there's St. Paul's Presbyterian Hospital, there's Charlton Methodist Hospital, uh, and uh, if you look at the hospital industry, interestingly, it's ha it has its origins in Christianity. It was construed as an extension of Christian grace to be kindly disposed toward people. I mean, if you look at the matrix from which the industry came from, it, it comes from the issues and the language that I'm kind of propping up today. But being hospitable, the, the, there, there's something healing uh, just associating with people that are hospitable. It's one of the reasons, by the way, why I think this community is going to grow. It's, it is growing, by the way, numerically, in different ways. The Lord has put in my heart just to add water. Just to add water. And because it, it's warm people, it's kind people, it's hospitable people. Ho hospitable people. It's like, if you have an oasis, people are eventually going to find it because a lot of people are thirsty. A lot of people are lonely in this world. They're alienated. They really do live as aliens in so many ways, lost in a crowd. 
Yeah, I'm a professor at a Bible college here at this campus. There could be a thousand people worshiping in the sanctuary. A quarter of them could be aliens, lonely. Mm -hmm. You can get lonely and lost in a crowd of a thousand people. That, that, that uh, there's just, it, it's just so ubiquitous. It's so everywhere in culture. When people are hospitable, the, the, you know, hospitality telegraphs a kind of kindness, a kind of grace, and there's something that's felt with it. He says here, persisting in prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, extending hospitality. It's interesting because it's healing. It's healing. That, that, uh, it's one of the benefits of fellowship, by the way. People need people. We live lonely lives. And, and uh, you know, that, uh, where people can come and be known by others, accepted by others, uh, where people can share, give, and receive different people, mixing with other kind of people. You get to know the other person. They tell their story. And, and there's a certain kind of contagion. You've heard it said that certain diseases are contagious. Boy, you, you, get, you get COVID, it's contagious, it can spread. Well, it can. Certain diseases can spread. What cause dis-ease, the lack of ease in someone's life can spread. Hope can spread too. People interact with other people, they hear stories. You know, testimonies. Of, of, of God's grace in people's lives and people getting on with it and it gives people hope. You know, Barry and I love telling our testimony, you know, that Barry and I are looking at our ninth anniversary in a couple of weeks. And uh, Barry was 62 when, when she married me. I was 60. She's a cougar. Yes. And, 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 and Barry never married. She never married. She thought she was never going to marry. Well, I took one look at her and I experienced her and I said, we're going to change that narrative. You know, but, but uh, Jack Hayford, who married us, said, you ought to tell your testimony how it happens. It gives people hope. There's so many people wandering around, am I going to ever find love? Well, there's a love story that can give people hope that wouldn't otherwise be there. Amen. It just stokes a kind of confidence. And that's what people need in life, confidence. The word confidence comes from the Latin, confides, with faith. Faith, with faith. And it stimulates that. Or maybe all oh, my life, I just screwed up so much, but man, you don't know where I've been. Look, you know, my story, uh, you know, I got a ring on my finger at Cambridge University, graduated at the top of my class there. I'm a PhD student. I'll be going again in a couple weeks, for a couple weeks, working, working my th way through it. I flunked out of high school. I got into college on academic probation when I was 27 years old. I was a janitor from, from the time I got out of high school until I, I went to college. Nothing wrong with being a janitor. God maybe gave someone a little potential to do other things as well besides cleaning floors. Why not? I mean, it's when you hear testimonies, wait a minute, you know, that someone got his life together with the Lord, got saved, got on with it, got vision, and you can, you can rebound. You can get new vision for your life. You can, you can press on with it. You, you can do it. When I was doing my religious, I felt called into the ministry. When I went to get into Bible college, they wouldn't accept me. I had to go back and beg and got in on probation. I wound up taking a master's degree and a doctorate from Southern Methodist University, graduating at the top of the class. No brag, just fact. And then, you know, my master's and PhD in, in, in Cambridge is as a scientist. Crazy idea, God put on my heart. Uh, there it is. You know, burgeoning scientist. That, that uh, well, Jeffrey, you're boasting. Well, maybe, but maybe it telegraphs hope for someone can say, wait a minute, what, what, what are the dreams in my heart? Yeah. What are the things that I say I can't do? You know, I mean, there's just something when, when people testify, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Yeah. When people run into other people with their stories, you know, someone this week, I'm not going to mention any names, in this community got their chip. They were sober for nine years. Nine years. Yay. Okay? Nine years. If that person ever wants to tell their story, that's their business. I don't need to telegraph others' business to you. But I, okay, there you go. Yay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And he was able to rebound from it all. He's a psychiatrist. 
I, I don't recommend them to anybody, so don't go see them for that. I, I don't recommend them. I can't. I, I talk to them all the time. I was just as confused now as I've been for the last four years. It hasn't done me any good. I mean, anyways, I digress. The point is, you run into people. And you run into stories about, wait a minute, you know, people, they got their life together, they rebounded, they rebuilt, they did this, they, you know, and faith at work in the world. You know, it, it, it's, a, it, it, it's a certain kind of contagion. People need that. Because sometimes people in life, that, that, that just kind of run out of options. They don't see over the horizon. You get disoriented, you lose hope. And, and you want to be in a, in a community where there's kindness. We share a moment. We break bread together. We share a meal. We share a dollar. We share with the missionary, whatever. If you look, bless those, in verse 14, who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. You know, it, it, it's, uh, you know, some people are going to be mean toward you. I don't know how many of you people... How many, it's so easy for us, boy, we, we, we run into nasty people out there in the world and we just get all disoriented and discombobulated because of them. God bless. May the Lord bless them. May the Lord bless you and keep you far from me. But bless you. Bless you. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Sometimes someone's in a bad way. You don't need someone, and guys will do this. You see someone in trouble, you want to go give them advice. They need you to sit down, shut up, and be there with them in a moment. That's all they need. It's just that you're there in the moment. Now, I give advice if, they, if someone asks. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own eyes. By the way, that's what he's saying in Deuteronomy. He's saying, listen, remember... That once upon a time, when you run into an orphan, when you when you run into an alien, when you when you run, run into someone who's really messed up, he says, don't harden your heart, don't have an evil eye. Remember, once upon a time, that was you. That was you. And and don't be proud. You know, I mean, it, it, don't, don't be proud if you're in a better place now than you were then. I used to get in trouble for it, by the way, as a police officer, kind of. You know, I'm out there on 